over towards this B side to start it off. Jump spot coming out from Carrigan with the kit and smoke over towards the van position. Triple stack over towards the A side. This is going to be a BXE from OG. And Carrigan's seen them all. Quick run out of the apartments. There's Cold Zero in with a frag. Mantu can trade one back. Carrigan will get a quick tap to the head. The response towards one of Issa as NBK facing aggressive. That P250 straight in without the raid boss, but still gets the kill to a three versus three. Bomb plant can be secured on default. It's retake mode face. Uh, three versus three. They've been able to get short very, very quickly. Two players out towards this bench position from the T side. Maybe try and swing on each other's contact. MBK try to tap away. Finally gets that kill in the trade onto Rain, but it's Brokey up close towards the backside corner. Trying to see if they can get this time going and get those trades together, but OG are doing a really good job of just trying to stall. Not over peak. Finally, Alexa be going down. It means that MPK's on for a 4k, and Twist is going to be able to find two of his own. They get onto that bomb. Pick up that kit for Twist, but it's not even necessary. OG get the bomb plat, but not the pistol victory. Great retake coming in from FaZe. Yeah, great information calling as well. Carrigan saw those players straight out of the apartments and you can see the immediate adjustments from FaZe. Just rotate B straight in for the retake. Yes, they concede the bomb plan, but as you mentioned, the money bonus is going to be the better they have for OG. Will they opt to go for a force buy here? Maybe no. We've seen a, quite a frivolous amount of them and actually well, I'm completely mistaken on that one. It's an MBK. And Mantu and Valde buying into the Galils. So Lexi B will also follow suit. So five Galils to take into round two here, Dwayne. And I can't be too shocked with the force buy. It does leave a limited amount of utility sets, though. Yeah, look, it absolutely does. A lot of the time in these four spies, you might see three, four Galils and then a couple of MAC-10s. But because we're not seeing any SMGs coming out, it's going to be very light on the util standpoint. FaZe are going in for a little bit of a unique approach too with their buy strategy. No SMGs for them. Rifles out for everybody. For Masters and that AUG for Brokey. Of that single kit that was uh, picked up from the last round off of Carrigan onto Twists. OG just running out their default. Nice and slow to start it off. And you've got to wonder here for OG, like, what is sort of their plan? I mean, they can't go in for a set piece, obviously, with the limited util they have. So maybe just running a default, trying to get the opening pick, work the advantage, and just try and work the rotations is their best bet going into round two. Right, catch off an overextension or two from the CT side. You can see they're set up towards mid to expect FaZe to push forward, and uh, you wouldn't be surprised for a team like FaZe Clan to try and go for that kind of aggression, but so far, so careful with these famers in play. There's not an M4 in sight for the CT side, so can't be too overzealous, especially if OG have a force up. Have run this timer very low and taken very little map control for it. They will start to lean towards mid and twist, sees what's going on. Again, information spot out from the connector control, sees those players up top mid. Volde will be down in the uh, underpass area to watch for anyone from the sniper's nest. But 30 seconds, OG are going to have to add relatively quickly into this bomb site. Got Twists on the stairs to try and be a major thorn on their side. Lexi B will try to isolate him, but no, Twists gets that kill. Kicks things off. Back on the bomb planter. And Mantu can't get a triple on Valde. But Cold Zero swinging in from jungle. Is anyone going to check the position? Well, Valde's too focused on CT and goes down for it. Cold Zero comes up with a kill. And Drain is just traded back. Ten seconds. That bomb's still connected, though. That final kill from Carrigan on short should secure it. Indeed, Issa will find his kill back on Cole. But now needs to hunt Carrigan, who's staying alive. And Brookie's even way far further away at CT spawn. So... 2-0 for FaZe, crippling the economy state, forcing Issa to save. Yeah, look, one thing that we actually saw there from FaZe on the radar was actually Carrigan pushing quite far forward into the apartments. And what that allowed was almost a bit of a gamble lean coming through from FaZe. We saw three players out towards the A bomb site, a single player in uh, jungle too. And from there, they just put so much pressure on towards the top of connector, especially from Twist, being able to find a couple of kills on that for Mars, drop that bomb a couple of times, keep the time incredibly low and make OG panic. A great second round coming through from FaZe. OG, I've got that single for Mars, saved in from Issa in that last round, but really outside of that, that's all that they've got to work with. So money's going to be a little bit awkward, I want to say, going into round four, unless they can maybe somehow get a bit of a bomb plan and do some damage. But this looks like it's going to be a bit of a throwaway round. Maybe they can use that for Mars to get a bit of damage, but that's really all they've got to work with. They're going to get a bomb plan out of this. I think they would be happy with that much. Probably playing Issa for entry, so maybe his best bet is to try to you know, find a, a frag on the A site and then just allow his teammates to rush in, get the bomb plant quick. SMG close of rain, does C2, tag up Mantu to 54. Twists on the bat lines with his own M4, just waiting for the T's to make their way out. Finally, Lexi B swings, gets taken back, Twist gets two kills. Mop up round coming through for the CT side. See, there's a SMG, those MP9s can get as much cash as possible, and they get a pretty decent amount, but not a massive amount. Phase with a 3 0 start.
And now the rifle's coming for OG again. This is going to be limited for this one, forcing that save initially. No, we've seen for FaZe uh, 0 and 5 in the last three months on Mirage. We've had some decently close affairs, I think, against Spirit. Uh, in Dreamhack Masters Winter, they had a 13 to 16 loss. And then only recently, a couple of days ago, against Liquid in the uh, first best of three that they played, getting 11 rounds on this map. But yeah, no victories for them in the last three months. I can't say the same for OG 5 and 2 record coming into Mirage. And now we get into the opening rifle round. AWP being brought down for Mantu. A very similar approach to what we saw in the pistol round coming out for the T side with the bomb and a few players in towards the apartments. A little bit different in terms of variation, though. You've got a lurk coming out towards the top mid from Alexi B, as well as out from Palace from Issa. Mantu just slow walking forward with a teammate. They might be able to get very close to this initial contact from Karakin and then just rushing in towards the B site. Turn you down towards that B play again. They have Carrigan with the fam up on the site itself, playing around the uh, front corner as well. Similar sort of positions to his initial defensive on the pistol round, but now needing to turn it up against the rifles. And the Orpa Mantu is hoping for a jump face. Carrigan's smarter than that, though. He's not going to give up the opportunity to the OG side, and they're going to get forced to back off, replay the default from the mid position instead. Now, unfortunately, OG didn't really gain anything with that, did they? They pushed quite far aggressively in towards the apartments, but no opening kill. Like you said, no jump spot available. And now starting to lean in towards mid. Smoke going down towards the window room. Cold Zero playing out from ladder. And Twist playing a little bit of an off angle out from Connector. Trying to press forward. There's a lot of T-side players around him. He can drop this bomb. Gets the first pick in the second. Good hold starting off from Twist. Cold Zero backs up. Rain on site. Taps through. Takes down this. Is, and Cold Zero chimes in to take MBK as well. It's all left to Mansu out towards that mid control. And the CTs mopping up the mid position. OG trying to lean in but just getting ripped apart. Uh, I think that might just set the pace for this series at this stage. Dwayne, one exit will come through, but needs a whole lot more. And Cold Zero is getting him no more. 2K to his name at 16 points of health. And a 4-0 start for the face side. Uh, it's looking really good here from FaZe. Really dominant from Twist. Another great double. We've seen him playing out towards the connector and stairs area, just being an absolute madman so far in this first half. But I, I really get the feeling that OG might need a bit of a change of pace, right? It's been very slow, very passive. We haven't really seen anything quick aggression. We saw that in that initial default, 50 seconds on the clock, they still didn't have a contact peak until they finally started taking mid. And Brokey with the AWP playing out from window. Another Eco's got to come through from OG. Smoke down towards Windows. Going to at least maybe make Brookie reposition. But 4-0 for FaZe. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better start for them. Absolutely. For a map that they've been uh, completely swept on in the last three months, they haven't won it a single time over their campaign in DreamHack, Summit, and, of course, IEM Katowice. Seeing them get the uh, fantastic start against OG, who you consider them to have a good map in this one. I mean, they've had some great counters to the way that OG are playing the mid-control in the apartments face. Again, it's that slight introduction of the new elements that might turn the tap, uh, turn the uh, map up to their favor. So they're going in for NBK, looking out towards the short position, trying to keep his eyes on. Cindy is down from the CT side, will try and uh, keep OG at bay for the moment. They've got only those two players in the apartments looking for a B split with the majority of players being out towards the short control. And Brocky strikes on the bomb plant and takes out two. Needs that third frag. He's going to lose his teammate elsewhere. And his pistols almost Ooh. lined up for him. But unscoping at the wrong moment leaves Valde a deagle kill. Carrigan moving in, sees one player on the balcony, catches off his stuff, trying to focus back on Alexi P. That AWP will drop. And the AUG gets a 3k, cleans up the pistols. And Gets phase a fifth. A bit of pressure there towards that B site, though. You could feel for a second that maybe OG would have overwhelmed. Yeah, look, that was a decent eco for OG. Yeah, it wasn't quite the bomb plan, but a couple of kills. Yeah, very passive coming out from phase. We almost saw the AWP, like you mentioned, line up towards the apartments. A couple of good deagle shots come through. They don't get that bomb down. Carrigan has a nice hold from the back of the site with the AUG. 5-0 and o start coming through for phase. OG putting a couple of smokes down towards the mid control, up towards top mid, and window to start it off. Haven't really seen too much aggression coming out from FaZe either on this city site. Seen a couple of moments in which they've tried to over-aggress from the bottom of Connector, and that's what's coming through. Flash over the top, and it's an initial trade coming through as Mantu's able to get the pick back on a cold zero. Good start coming through from Twist, but they lose the advantage quickly. And the new star flashed in by a rain to allow a simple kill in. MBK caught flat-footed. Not expecting to find an aggressive face in the CT side. Given how FaZe Clan have sort of baited in OG and not gone hyper-aggressive. I mean, that's 
decent way to change the pace and catch OG off guard. Still got a lot of work to do if they want to uh, enter into the bomb site. A split on A maybe on the table. Issa in particular out towards ramp is going to win the fights against Rain, and that's not an easy fight to win at all. His teammates going to provide support as well. Shoulder baiting, seeing that one man as Frey comes through, gets that kill. AWP in the back lines of Brookie. Turning up, sees that one man, unscopes at the wrong moment, and that cost him his life. Falde ahead of the smoke, takes that kill. Now Twitch is quite behind Danger. Does drop the bomb oh! plant and make it two kills on Issa. That's a 3k, and potentially even an ace to defend it for the face side. 40 seconds, peeking into the AWP of Mantu next up. Sees him on the ticket proof. He baits in that shot. I stay for Quadra, looking for the ace for oh! Twist. No! Oh! Volde shuts it down to the last second, and OG finally win their first. Oh, Twist is feeling it. He's having such a good game, almost connecting onto the ace, and imagine how pumped they would have been after that one. 3 HP for Valde. It seems like for Brokey, right, almost unscoping in so many of these awkward encounters, and OG realized that they have not gotten off to that uh, good start they would have liked. Something that we kind of mentioned a little bit in the pregame, Jay, about their game against Vitality, getting off to a slow start there, and taking a tactical pause very early on. I mean, even with that round being won, you've got to think that they had so many advantages. Great peak coming in from Issa towards that ramp control, onto Rain that's just jiggle peeking. And trying to force the AWP into some awkward engagements out from the back of triple, but Twist just getting away with way too much. 12 kills in six rounds. Yeah, unreal start from him. Unreal stuff from Twist. And, and again, one of the players that a lot of people have their eyes on in this tournament for good reason. Yeah. Coming off the back of the incredible stint that he had with uh, uh, with, with Liquid, that yeah may have uh, petered off towards the end of the last year, but you've got to remember he was during he was with that team during their 2019 run, which was arguably the best Liquid we've ever seen. Very talented player, definitely deserving of a spot here in Face Clan, and, and doing a decent job of being able to uh, you know pull this team forward. Five one on the scoreboard at this stage. OG only just getting their first in this map up. I'm going to try and work for another one here. Got a Mac 10 in place, so it's not going to be the best of buys. A yeah, new challenge as well for Carrigan to be able to work with some new players. Having lots of stints on international rosters coming back towards the phase camp. Uh, OG look like they're going back over towards the A site. I've done this time and time again over the last couple of rounds. Rain might just get flashed in towards ramp to go for a bit of an aggressive peek. Flash in. Oh, I tell you what, if he goes any further forward, he might spot that bomb from Alexi B. Orpa Brook is going to be the next main concern. Takes a shot off, misses. Twist can swing back, take Volday instead. Orpa up on the ticket, on the uh, uh, firebox, I should say. Boosted up. Looking for a kill towards Connector. Can't land it. Rain will get the kill instead. Brookie finally turns up the Orpa on Issa. His MVK finds a trade, but now it's a four versus two. Mantu's got to work out a palace position, get some sort of trade on the bomb site, and his MVK falls. He's going to be the last man standing. Even Rain has control of the bomb, and FaZe have control of their sixth. OG are being overwhelmed here on CT. Now, FaZe having control of this series, right? Like, you got to imagine, this is the OG's map pick or Mirage lower bracket round one game. Whoever loses this is going home, and FaZe are putting up some numbers. They're putting up immense pressure. And OG, I almost get the feeling that they're cracking a little bit. Alexi B, 0 and 7, yet to get a kill on this T side. They've already taken one tactical pause. Matu's just got to hold on to this AWP. There's no way that he can try and go for this. Bring it into the next round. Money is going to be a bit of an issue here. They do have the, well, getting close to, I should say, the max round loss bonus. 2,900 to follow here. They're going to have to eco around this orb. FaZe Clan. Look at the AKs that they've got on this CT side. Yeah, three across the board. OG might not have any for this next round. And yeah, Deagles coming through on three players. So a deco coming out for the T side, and, and rightfully so. In half by into a full one with the max loss bonus, as you mentioned, coming in to effect in the next freeze time. Yeah, OG definitely not looking like the team that could have taken this one close to phase. You know, as I mentioned before, the general like rivalry has gone in the favor of phase in terms of the best of threes. They're at four to two in terms of the maps, they're nine to five. The last series victory was an OG win, but I'm not even sure that that counts because that was more of a show match than an actual significant yeah. tournament. Yeah. Phase right now making mint meet the opposition, but NBK has something to say about that. Takes out Rain over aggressing into the palace control. Gonna swing back for that rifle. Brookie is forced out to retreat back to the site. And now the A hit looks to get set up. 
Yeah, he's in a very uncomfortable position here, trying to get back towards CT. A lot of pressure coming out from Ramp in terms of a mass amount of T side players. Needs a little bit more assistance. Nade coming through. Missed AWP shot coming out for Brokey. And now it's a two man advantage coming in for OG. They've been able to pick up that AK2 from BK. And Alexi B swings out for the top of connector. Carrigan and Cold Zero, the last couple left against an eco. OG are doing mass amount of damage. And they're capitalizing on so many of these opening kills. They know where Carrigan is. They know where Cold Zero is. Nice tap comes through to MBK to try and bring this round back. The four versus two advantage. Now Carrigan gets uh, several lineups, and they're all going to face him together. Finally, take him down as Man Two chimes in against Cold Zero onto the CT spawn, and very well played there from OG. You saw how basically phase were siphoned off from each other. No trade potential when it came to that A bomb site here, and it all started with the overextension in the palace control. NBK getting that kill, and Phase forced to retreat. You could see how uh, you know uh, Rookie looked very unconfident in his position back over on the site and CT spawn. So. Second going the way of OG, and more rounds like that will be required. This next round will not be a similar sort of situation, though. It's a straight eco across the face clan side, so should be a free pickup for the T's. That's one of the first times we've actually seen FaZe's over-aggression get punished, right? And one of the first times we've actually seen over-aggression coming through from FaZe. We certainly saw that MPK finds that first pick, and then for Brokey, like, he's just got nowhere to really fall back towards CT without just being sort of siphoned off from the players out from ramp. That forces phase in a very awkward economical stance. Have to eco going into round nine. Bit of aggression coming through to the top mid area. MPK already fighting that first pick. Flash comes over the top and they are just lining him up nice and easy. Dealing with the anti-eco frags. They know where Cold Zero is. Doesn't look like anyone's going to go down for this T side. A nice third round for OG. That's going to help their confidence moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, uh, they, you know, just to get that sort of rifle, that, that eco victory, and then converting the anti-eco off the back of that, and then getting some more momentum swinging up against the full buy that will come through from the phase. I say full buy, and I just see a couple of the SMGs in play for that T as he side count. Yeah, third to the board of the OG side. And within half of FaZe's uh, scoreline. Warp in for Brookie, still being in for this uh, side of the map up. He'll be playing over towards the B site this time. He was playing over on A quite frivolously and frequently. Oh, that's spray through and it's actually caught someone on the smoke called zero will fall. Rookie does find that trade on the other side of the map, so it is a four versus four. But for a moment there, OG had a bit of an angle to work with. Yeah, I think just another straight spam coming through from Issa out towards Ramp, finds that first pick. Brokey then gets aggressive in the apartments to try and trade back for a 4-4. Four and four. So OG now have to try and slow it down, check out all of these angles just in case Brokey is still pushed in aggressively. Or maybe it's a bit of a dual setup and there is a couple of players, but uh, not quite the case at all. Rotating Carrigan over towards the beast site. Now, Brokey's got a smoke to try and slow down this pressure into the apartments, but that's all the really utility they've got. And OG just pushing forward of it. Carrigan down here towards Truck Drops, that bomb planter, NBK with a trade back, and the AWP of Brookie missing some seriously critical shots. Now Twist being aggressed upon, he reads the angle of Issa. The bomb plant can be secured with him just holding this angle. He doesn't need to press forward, doesn't need to give it the man advantage. So smart from OG just to secure the site, secure the plant, and force FaZe to save. There you go, a nice execute coming through. But again, a couple of awkward positions from FaZe, isolating those positions on the AWP, especially Brookie having a seriously difficult start to do. Yeah, he's uh, he's having a rough time. Uh, there, there's no other way of putting it. I think that his AWP has has missed some real crucial shots so far, whether it's been uh, close range engagements, whether it's even been the sort of passive sight holds. I need to really see him getting warmed up in the early start of Mirage because OG are now starting to get some rounds together. FaZe got that 6-1 to one lead. Now three rounds in a row for OG. You've got one to win the tactical timeout coming through from FaZe. They're in a position now where they're going to have to be on another eco, you would expect. They've got those two M4s in play, but not really enough money to go for a force buy investment around it. Two rounds the difference. OG have done some serious catching up. The start of the game might have looked a bit awkward, but now it's looking awkward for FaZe. Those two M4s will be the only main weapons in check and only an upgrade pistol and Carrigan that CZ and that's going to be it. They got PT-50 as well, does get bought at the last second of the buy time. Let's see if Fades can do unto OG what OG did unto them in previous rounds. 
Matt 10 straight out for Alexi B, though, sees that first contact on the M4, realizing that it is one of the safe weapons in, and get forced back here. Valde instead entering with the AK towards the B bomb site, back turn towards the site itself. One CT goes there, Carrigan's repositioned, he's on for two, but no, NBK shuts him down as Brocky also falls. Well, check Cold Zero in the back line, this Deagle missing its shots, does get Mansu in the end, but with the last man standing, Valde just needs to find his triple and he will secure this one for OG. And now FaZe should be up to a definitive buy here for round 12. Uh, look, decent damage for Nico. They don't keep the M4s in play, but they were able to get away with a couple of kills. Get the buyer going back forth. I see that AWP coming through for Brokey. M4s coming across the board for everybody else. Uh, OG. Some of these rounds are starting to get won a lot quicker as well. And I think we're seeing a little bit more of a change of pace over on this T side rather than the slow passiveness that we started seeing for the first sort of five or six rounds. Ooh, Miss Smoke comes out towards the window room for the T side. That needs to get information called out, but maybe not because they just dive out from the palace fast in towards the A side. Brookie following suit on Issa as well, out in the open, not checked out, but a CT spawn, no one covering him off. Now Swift finds his second kill on Vole, past the head of the smoke, and Mantu being pressured once again. The confidence returning to FaZe Clan as they have the entire crossfire locked on that bomb's position. And Mantu and Alexi B, like, uh, they've got a minute and 20 to try to recover this round position. And like, how do they do it? Do they even bother with it? Do they might just go back for a save call at this stage? I mean, they've just been overwhelmed by FaZe in this round. So effectively, no trades on the T side, and it's such a difficult crossfire to break here. Yeah, look, I, I don't really see why they should save. I mean, like, you're going into round 13 with so much cash on this T side. You might as well just try and see if you could do more damage. But then the caveat point is, do you want to give the opportunity up for a double up to your opposition or maybe give them another AK for Alexi B? 45 seconds. That was a lot quicker out from OG. Flash over the top from Palace. Tried to dive them forward, but it was Twist again to have a really big hold towards our A side. Brokey gets involved too. OG starting to regroup together. It does look as if they want to at least try and go for this. Flash in. Lexi sees one. Loses the fight to Twist. That's three kills up for him. Brookie with the AWP on lock. Shuts down Mantu as he tries to face in and goes down pretty effectively. What a confident round there from FaZe, and OG better not let that kind of stuff repeat itself. They're the ones that need that confidence. But all off the back of Twist start up here again. You talk about his frags a little bit earlier on in the matchup, and he's 17 and 7 right now. Far beyond anybody else in server. No other player has hit double digits so far, and he's almost on 20. <laughs> For the first half of this matchup, that certainly is an impressive little stat line. It's Mansu. Up and out into the mid control here with his teammates behind him looking for large mid presence here for the OG side. Flashes will go in to allow Cold to start peeking up, but goes back into the ladder room again. Phase back to this passive default set on the uh, city side. Now, having that jump spot out from Carrigan towards the B side. And Brokey now playing towards the top of Connector with that uh, AWP. Carrigan just trying to give himself a little bit of room, falling back after a bit of early presence comes through from Valdate. Rumpus coming through towards top mid for the T side. No real mid stance though coming in. Brokey playing very passive out from window itself. And between him and Cold Zero, they could set up a pretty nasty crossfire if OG try and get into window. Cold Zero might peek in towards mid control as well, catch on Valdate. That smoke up will disallow the opportunity. Brokey does peek in, doesn't catch a kill. May have seen some vision though. Falling back towards the B site instead as the CT start pressing forward towards A. It's Issa alone. Can he catch off over extensions? Will he extend himself? Get rain for the first four twists. Not going to then get away with a second. Rookie dealt with by Valde. Cold Zero and twists go back and forth as MBK gets the penultimate kill of the round. 2v2 as Carrigan chimes in. Makes it a double from short. And now Alexi B is left alone. IGL stepping up in this round. Now he's got to be the clutcher for his side. Gets it to an even standing. And now it truly is IGL v IGL in a 1v1. Smoke back on Murder Hole. Should allow him to cross back here towards the B bomb site. Going to sneak past it and disallow Carrigan any information. As soon as that bomb goes down, though, Carrigan will have the idea that he could push forward because Alexi B will have to be all the way in towards the site. Time is incredibly low. Carrigan not pushing forward in case he gets baited through. Quarter plant coming through for Alexi B. Carrigan on the retake. Jiggle Peak comes out, doesn't quite see him towards market. I don't know if Alexi B was seen there from Carrigan. It all just comes down to a matter of timing on the repositioning from Alexi B playing back out towards the quarter position. 
52 HP, and it gets very, very silent for both these players. Carrigan trying to see if he can check this corner, and it looks like he's going to get his back turned completely to Alexi B to get a simple kill. Carrigan with a 3k, get onto that bomb, get phase, a lovely clutch to come out, and now it's him to be able to put up the numbers. Yeah, a life round from Carrigan to get the half for phase. Three rounds of difference here, OG. Back up on the buy with that bomb plant bonus. It might struggle into round 15 a little bit. But for this round, they can be able to shut down phase. And with the damage done to that uh, CT side, they could be up for the reset instead if OG can win round 14. AK has crossed the board. AWP, of course, in for Mantu. For the most part, OG is uh, performing on a similar sort of level to each other. It's Brookie with a gap in that smoke. He utilizes it to get a kill right here. He's been very shaky with this warp in this matchup so far. He's been unable to see anything. OG not extending out the mid control, reading that smoke like a book, and they'll just wait for him to back off away. Yeah, try this run boost once again, but every time they've gone for it, FaZe have just not even shown sort of any aggressive mid stance. We saw at least that one round that Twist got flashed in towards peaking connector, but really it's been quite passive towards that uh, window room and ladder room position between Cold Zero and the AWP. And Twist now showing a little bit of uh, emphasis towards connector. MPK flashed in. OG looking to maybe try and split towards the A side again. Nice nade doing damage to Valde and MVK, but only those two players tagged everybody else unscathed and not a mass amount of damage considering how close that HE was to the center of mass for OG. Cindy is in, Cold Zero up on the ladder room. Alexi B's reading this, but he gets peaked upon, loses that fight. Cold Zero almost making it a double spring through that wall on Valde. One Malikus twist comes in to support, two kills for him as he mops up the mid control. Issa out here towards the A site, will catch a frag, but the bomb needs to get recovered by Mantu here. Smokes up, Orp caught off by Carrigan next. They don't even need to challenge Issa in this one, as it looks like FaZe will win their ninth here on CT. One kill is found for a 2k overall, but 30 seconds to get an ace, and no one from the CT side is presenting himself, twist set with the orb, gets another 3k, 21 for him, and a ninth to the border phase. I think OG just need to go for a set piece, Jay. Like, we haven't seen the set pieces over towards the A side. It seems that they're really struggling to not get the mid control, but actually find presence to get in towards the site with it. Anytime they've been able to push in towards connector or up towards that short position, it's just been the crossfires that have been locked so solid. But Twist consistently putting up some really, really big performances round after round. And OG even struggling to get a buy together in round 15. An aggressive approach coming through from the AWP of Brokey. Looking to push even further forward up towards top mid. He could be on for a bit of an opening frag. Flash over the top. Does blind him. Doesn't quite take the shot. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of that. Brokey not playing as amazing as you would have hoped he would. Getting that aggressive. It oozes of confidence from a mentality standpoint, but I wasn't sure he was going to hit his shots. That could have been an easy kill to open things up for OG. In the end, they are forced to back off in the mid position, thanks to uh, Twister support. Get Brocky back into the bomb site, and now they hold positions ready to receive. Very aggressive round for Brocky in the end. Uh, Brocky in the end. Still focusing on the ramp control alongside Rain this time, who's pushing forward of it, checking the corners. Two players to deal with on the entries for OG. Utility going over Shadow Scene. Shoulder bait falls that off off angle. They're going to check Rain. Yes, they are. He goes down. The rookie holds on to Mantu. Peaks back in for two. Can't land his shot. Oh, oh. Lex just connected that second man. Oh. And gets MC. And again against the Lexi B next. Oh, it's up. Gets a double to turn it back to a 2v2. Oh, Karakun picking up from CT. The timing could be everything, but he gets flashed off from the T side, and Itza follows up with another kill into the round. He's found a 3k, and now it's down to Cold Zero to try and clutch Alexi B. Secures OG their sixth. On Intel Extreme Master Certified PCs, you'll find a gold badge. It means you'll find brilliance inside, that you'll get high-grade components like Intel Core i7 and i9 processors. That over aggressed though, just ahead of the stairs position, twists and Brookie. See what they can do. Valde Scene taps through two Glocks. 
facing in. He's not getting caught off guard, but the flashbang turned away. That's one headshot lined up on the likes of Valde. Brocky still holds him for a bit more as Swiss peeks in, gets taken back out, but Brocky still holds himself a triple. And Mantu suddenly left alone from the jungle entrance. No kit in his hands, no way to play this. Brocky ends up with a 4K, and that's so much better for him to start things off in the second half. Yeah, look, we, we know what this Latvian star can do, right? And that's that's really going to help him. Great just pistol display coming in between him and Twist. Just baiting off one another, peeking on each other's contact. Dealing with this over-aggression coming through from OG with a mass amount of players out from CT to try and get that retake together. It was a very decent start there from Issa, but I almost got the feeling that maybe he was a little bit too hungry, Jay. If he would have just held on to that 5 and 4, played passive in towards CT, OG would have had the advantage going into the retake. But instead, it goes the way over towards FaZe Clan. They get the pistol victory. They get up to double digits forced by back from the cts Ooh, bringing a couple of players in towards short just these two individuals though the deagle's down for og how are we gonna get caught off guard or they were really positioned very early on in this one Next to be will fire down on his position, hoping to catch off somebody. Two players in that ladder room. Mantu ready for someone to enter against him. Volde might play a bait and switch. They do catch that first kill, not quite that second. And another Mantu still in there as well, so just smoke off, not going to allow the peak to come through. And the CT player now NBK arrests on the B bomb site and he's quickly taken back out of play. All on Alexi B. Oh, the Deagle not landing. Brookie. Simple frag for his own right and OG overwhelmed by the rifles in this one as this should be at 11th for the phase side. And this is where you start to sweat a little bit if you're OG. Again, to remind you all, this is their pick in the best of three. If they lose it this badly to phase, then things don't look encouraging going into maps two and three. And another stat that kind of draws on this further is that they are one of the only teams in both the group stage and the play-ins to lose every single map pick that they have had in a best of three contacts. We saw against Liquid, they picked into Mirage, they lost that. Against Cloud9, they picked into Overpass, they lost that. And we saw against Vitality a couple of days ago, they picked into Dust2, they lost that. Yes, that series was a 2-0, uh, while the other ones did go three maps. But for OG, they have always struggled on their map picks. And I'm not really sure what that's sort of coming down to, whether it's sort of the, the misplay on the veto or or what sort of that draws onto, but it seems like it's a parallel that isn't just happening once in a blue moon, Jay. It's happening in every single best of three. Eleven to six. For the moment on this map, it's an eco round for OG. USP's on for Alexi and MBK, the HG's, the smoke's down and uh, probably going to be a, a pretty decent basis to work off the back of this uh, next one for the face side. Haven't seen many good anti-eco rounds so far in this one. OG. Similar sort of passive style for the most part. And that one player pushed up in the apartments though, that could be a bit of a concern if Mantu catches anybody off guard. Flash in evades it, gets the first headshot in on Twist. AK can get grabbed, peeks back in with a second. He may have seen Cold Zero there, we've definitely seen him with a tracer, but MBK will go down on the B side defensive. He's the only man left here. Might have to back up. Volta sleeps behind the uh, bench position, but Rain gets that kill together, and now Mantu's just gonna burn. All the utility put up towards him. Alexi B next up to face, gets caught off guard by Brocky, who lands on that headshot, and Issa uh, left alone with the D winner one versus four. Good setup there for OG, almost worked out. If only NBK had held, or Valde had held there towards the B side of bench positions so 12 to the board of phase stacking up the rounds now set themselves up on victory row for the t side yeah og is starting to run out of opportunities here 12 to 6 half lead going forward into phase clan now moving forward into the t side and oh, we're going to the opening gun round got to expect man to to force into the awp phase clan have looked very dominant since going into winning the pestle it's up uh, just holding on to this deagle a little bit of head armor so uh, not too much, but it's rather at least something to move forward into. A little bit surprised we haven't seen more tactical pauses coming out for OG. We've only seen that one tack, and that was about round five or six or so, very early on in the first half. That's the only one we've seen from OG. Right for this rifle round, might be a good time to call it in. I mean, FaZe are getting very close towards the victory here. Not quite 100%, like, you know, definitive, but... Yeah. Again, this is where you need to start putting up some decent rounds to try and bring your own map pick back as well. That's the other thing to consider. OG behind by this margin on their map pick and not taking any moment to adjust their play style. 
Lil's in on two players here. FaZe have a bit of a broken buy, but it's more of a bonus round. Not opting to upgrade those rifles just yet. A gap in that smoke for Mantu to try and work with. He doesn't land a shot close range blind with the second man does not connect it either. Utility will just force them away from the stack position. Alexi B still peeking in, but you can be definitively assured that FaZe have left that mid position and go towards the A stack instead for a set piece again. And unfortunately, even with OG getting that information and putting down some decent util, they don't quite capitalize on any of the T's being swung out into the open. Rain in particular getting back across from top mid to try and group up with his teammates. A set piece coming in towards the A site. Twist is still in a very late lurk towards his top mid position who could try and, if they plant open for short, be that one person to just try and deny from the other side of the map. It's a pressing very far forward in towards the triple position. They know where he is, struggling to find anything, trying to get back towards CT. And it's Valde to find the first pick in the round. A big kill on Carrigan, and Alexi fires through the smoke, catches Rain. Suspects are going to be close towards that default box or towards the danger box, and that's exactly where he was at. Five versus three now, Bomb in full sight of the face side. Mantu leaning up towards the mid position, has one player to deal with here in Connector. Twisters his back turn, perfect chance for Yorpa to take down one of the crucial lurkers. Drops in, seen him, and peeking out to that corner, gets that shot again. They're on the Bomb for the full defuse. Alexi B and Vole clean up the last couple of kills to the main site defenders, and OG with a flawless read take for all five alive on the CT side. Yeah, probably one of the best rounds we've seen from OG in this entire map. What a retake. Just really well timed. We see Valde spamming through the jungle smoke. Gets that first initial duel. Issa had a bit of a tough time. He falls back towards CT. Another pick comes out to get the 5 on 3 advantage. And then as soon as twists, we we'll just get spotted out by that Orpa. An easy shot comes through from Mantu. Close range. And OG start their campaign on their CT side. Seven rounds up, five to try and tie up. Alexi B now with the AWP running double orbs going into round 20, but Brokey gets run boosted over. And Alexi B, we can say goodbye to that double orb setup. They weren't expecting that one. Not that much is safe to say. Cool looking the wrong way. Um, Alexi just taken out so early in this round, it's such a huge start of a phase. All the mid control can be established. And OG are not going to go ahead and repeat this. No one in short or connector. FaZe have basically dominion over, over both sites here. They can go wherever they want. Even so much as a third man rotating away from the A site. So that might be the easier hit. If they overwhelm it, so that might just be an immediate save call from the CT side. Yeah, look that. They're making a bit of a risk here, Jay. They're gamble stacking up towards that B site. So it's just going to have to have one huge, huge hold. Otherwise, it's just going to be an instant save, and he's even being brought over. I think this might just be an instant save attempt coming through from OG, putting so much emphasis over towards this B site. Issa getting eyes out from window, but FaZe are just going to be able to take A, and once they start clearing out the bomb site, they're going to be thinking to themselves, hang on a minute, how is there nobody here? Flashes will go over, smoke's down. Issa should read what's going on here. He knows that that smoke was somewhere around the jungle position, so it's probably going to be a... Uh... Connect to jungle stairs, sort of a, a spoke position. Either way, his M4 is backed up by the CT spawn, and his teammates are not responding to the uh, movement here on the A site. Flash in, Carrigan. Catching off Issa, but not catching the kill. And you were right about that gamble, start to save. Three players on B play, not responding to that bomb plant. Issa's slowly backing off to go ahead and join them. One kill made the difference in this round, and to think it was just such a... A, a blindsided sort of factor, you know. Alexi didn't see that coming. And FaZe capitalizing on that to just take control of their 13th. And OG rightful to save in this one. You know, the money's just not there for another buyback. They need these rifles to stay in. They can afford to drop. Okay, Alexi B back probably on an M4. I don't think they can go double orps again. Unfortunately for them, FaZe are not going to go hunting either. Their own economy is a little bit limited. It's better to keep their five weapons in play. But it does mean three to the map win for FaZe. And six rounds in the lead above OG. If there's a time for this team to step up, it would be now. I really like that from FaZe that they don't go hunting. They're the, they would have had the information that it was a save call immediately, right? When you start clearing out the A side and then you see one player deep in CT, you know straight away that they're playing absolutely no one on A and it's just a, it's a B gamble. My OG being able to force the weapon forward into the M4, but no AWP is going to come out going into round 21. Rain going fast out towards the top mid area. Mantu actually taking a little bit of early damage out from Connector. FaZe might even be wanting to put a little bit of a play out towards that B site. Nade goes back though, and very similar damage done to both of the AWPers going into round 21. Yeah, Brookie on 59, Mantu on 61. 
HP advantage of two points for AG OG. Now the utility coming down, that might be about to change. NBK, can he hold on to a kill? He's usually been first frag with his beat bombsite in the past, but Alexi B's there to back him up. Back in the back corner, two frags to his name. NBK looking for something back on Brookie, but no! Brookie gets two kills, the Molly and the AWP. Carrigan getting the bomb. Brain boosted up on the boxes. It's a CZ oh. but loses the fight. Phase lost those two opening picks, but the smokes kept OG completely scrambled, not playing together and losing as individuals. One on three now for Valde, and he's not even bothering for this retake. I think that's a death slammer, really, from OG. Like, when you think Alexi B has had the perfect read of bringing three players over towards that B site, they have a two man advantage from Alexi B straight spam. And then from there, the trades just come back. What was it? MBK getting aggressively up towards Van to look into the apartments. So many just wildly over-aggressive peaks coming out for OG, rather than just playing passive and, and playing off one another for the trades. And FaZe win a round that in no way, shape or form should they have done so. Even a really sloppy spray coming through from Issa on towards that booster position from Rain. That did not look good at all from OG. And Brookie's found himself in this second half, now looking to match up to Twist's numbers. The CT side Orpa was looking uh, so unconfident, so shaky, missing some pretty basic and critical shots, but towards the end of it, he started looking good. Now he's back in with some decency. Manti with his Orpa will start things off by getting a collateral tag in, takes out Rain. And tags Brookie to 17 HP. Issa now close towards Rams. Got several players to deal with, including that bomb planter at Twist. Looking at that gap in the smoke, opts to back off. That's a smart call. He's the only player here on A. And he's back up to get here relatively quickly if they want to try and hold something. Minute and 20. The smoke is coming down. Two of them on towards Connector Jungle and Stairs. Flashes over. No smoke for CT. It's all down at Issa towards Dark. Molotov to his position. Not going to get checked up. Instead, Cold Zero burns away the Carrigan's assistant. Twist gets the kill on Alexi P. And once again, one man becomes the anchor to fall. And they get the bomb plant in a 4v3 situation. Oh, more spam damage coming through onto Valde. But look how low a couple of players are on this T side. Good AWP shot coming through for Mantu. And Karakin and Cold Zero need a fight on very low HP. A big shot comes out from Cold Zero out towards jungle. And they've even got a wraparound play no for way. Cold Zero to find a 3k in the round. MPK may have just been seen out towards Ticket. He's in a 1v3 and he's been legged up by the Orp. Brokey Peak straight back in. And FaZe Clan gets a map point on OG's map pick of Mirage. How Jay? How are they consistently bringing rounds back from the man disadvantage scenario, especially in this second half? You got to think of the HP numbers as well for FaZe. Even Brookie was less than 20 points of health. I think he was on 17. So we're looking at like a total of 26 HP across three players, and OG still couldn't get the trades. FaZe on map points. And now looking to secure the map win. You must imagine that this is going to go their way. And OG have not even turned up to play today. They picked into Mirage. Not a standardized pick for them, but a curveball to hopefully avoid their Inferno woes. And I mean, well, just, <laughs> it's not exactly been the best of decisions. Valde and Mantu will get a couple of picks to start things off here in round 22. That's a five versus three situation. Mantu may even be facing for a bit more back here towards underpass. Cold Zero will get there and he will take the AWPA down. A great couple of picks coming through from OG, but they've got to hold on to the advantage. And look for FaZe, I think they've just been outclassing their opposition today. They've been converting so many rounds in which you probably think they shouldn't have. Anytime they've had the advantage, they've always been able to find that capitalization. But even in the rounds in disadvantage scenarios, and now starting to regroup out towards the A site. Now, there is a very aggressive play coming through from Issa in the Palace position. I wonder if FaZe are going to expect this. Certainly, if no one goes in towards Palace, then maybe this position gets unchecked, but no. They've at least got one player coming in. Now two between Cold Zero and Twists. Good trade. Issa's got to line them both up. It all comes up the timing and positioning. Gets that bomb to drop. Sees Twists. Twists wins the fight. And now FaZe start fighting back for the man disadvantage, especially as Brookie peeks in from Ram. Gets Volde to fall now. A two versus two in Sue. Bomb plant Whoa! incoming. But Brookie is also taking aims. Alexi B left alone. Sees both players. Has got to concede the bomb plant. 
Trying to grab one of the AKs in the mid control, try fight back for the AWP, lets him go no further. Brocky ending up with 25 kills and 16 rounds of phase. They take map one as we take a break.